Just got done changing the hot end cover on my Tarantula Pro. Uh, didn't really need to make this mod, but I decided I felt like I wanted to print one and do a little customization. So as you can see, there is the little hot end there uh, and the Technivorous logo. And then you can also see I threw a little, little accent paint on there. It doesn't look too bad from <clears throat> a distance. It looks really sharp. So these front panels next to this yellow are very obviously green um, but when I take the yellow away from it it's hard to tell that they're not yellow so uh, the gold and green combination I think complements this really well and I thought it came out nice so uh, I just wanted to share with everybody and show you how it came out I'm not going to do a video at the moment about changing this because like I said it was totally unnecessary it's just a cosmetic thing I will make this uh, modified shroud with my logo and the hot end on it available on Thingiverse um, but for right now we're not going to do a video on this. I can tell you real quick that it involves removing these four screws which will separate the two fans that are inside and the shroud from the heat block. Um, getting these four screws lined back up and in properly was a big pain. Um, there's no real proper screw hole in fact, if you look up in here, if you look real close, you can see the lines in there. Uh, and basically your screws bite in between those lines. And there are little grooves, four of them, for where they're supposed to be at. Uh, but it's really hard to find them when you can't see back in there. And obviously you can't see back in there with the shroud in there. Now, uh, it would be easier if you took the top off because you would be able to see and line them up. Um, but that is just more steps as far as more screws to remove and stuff like that, which isn't a problem. But when we do do a video on replacing this, we will be going in through the top and removing this part before we take this off because it makes it easier to see everything. The other thing is, is they, these four screws here. Now there are screw holes in the actual original fan mount too, um, but these screw holes are not used. They use the bottom four. The reason this one is missing and the same on the other side is because they came stripped from the factory and I had a really hard time uh, because this part was already assembled getting those out of there um, And I didn't want to put them in and not be able to remove this in the future So I got to get two more screws, but it is in there securely and fastened pretty well So so far as far as mods go we have changed to a magnetic bed and changed the fan cover both of these are personal preferences I mean the bed I, I tend to go with magnetic whenever possible because it's easy to remove swap out for another and then print again immediately while you allow this one to cool and pop off your part. Um, the other thing we've done is this spool holder. There are several different versions of these. This is the one that was on the card, and I'm not even actually sure it's supposed to be a spool holder, but it's working as one for me. So we're just going to run with that for now. We are going to print a tabletop rolling one in one of the videos coming up. And we've done our new cover for the hot end. So this is probably um, one of my favorite aesthetic mods. Uh, because I think it just brings the whole thing together color-wise. And I know with the lighting I have at the moment, it's really hard to tell. Uh, but let's bring up that picture again. And what you're looking at here is gorgeous to me. So uh, I hope you guys like it. If you have any ideas for other mods for the TiVo Tarantula, please, please leave them in the comments down below because I am looking for everything I could possibly do to this machine. Just like the under 3, there aren't nearly as many... Uh, available, readily available. There are still quite a few mods, uh, just not as many users as the Ender 3. So, uh, I think one of the first things we're going to be doing as far as mods that are going to be permanent on this machine are probably going to be belt tensioners. So you can see there is a little bit of slack here. The more I print, the worse it gets, and eventually it starts to cause vibration. Um, so we're going to be picking up that slack with some belt tensioners and we also need to adjust the E-steps on this machine. Other than that, I'm getting some really nice prints. There are a few minor details that I think that those tweaks will take care of. And for being built from the ground up, I think it came together pretty nicely. Uh, I'm not going to show you all the other models I printed from it just yet, because we'll save those for the review, which is coming up. just want to spend a little more time with this machine and make sure I don't have any major problems. Which brings me to an interesting point when it comes to this fan shroud and the fans themselves. Now. The original TiVo Tarantula did not come with part cooling fans. It had the hot end fan, uh, but nothing on the sides here. And in fact, it was an open hot end. There was just a fan mount, and it was uh, 
kind of janky. Uh, but this guy has the part cooling fans. The only problem is they work a little too well. Now, this Volcano Hot End is super good at heating up and laying down plastic at a super fast rate. I can run at really fast print speeds and things come out really nice. Unfortunately, the faster I go, the quicker it loosens my belts and the quicker I get vibrations. So I have to adjust everything between each print or slow down my print time. So um, that brings me back to the belt tensioners, but we'll talk about that in a minute. We're still talking about the overpowered fans on this. So the hot end does heat up super fast, um, but one of the problems I ran into is say in Kira where you have your starting print temperature at 200 degrees and your actual print temperature at 210 degrees. Well, it'll raise it to that 200 degrees, it'll start the print, and then when it kicks into the layer at which it's supposed to raise to 210 degrees, uh, it will. It'll start heating the hot end. But the problem is the fans blow so hard that the hot end doesn't reach temperature quick enough and it fluctuates outside of that range for too long a time and sets off a thermal runaway error. Now there is no actual thermal runaway going on, um, but one of the things I found is either setting your fan speed to be consistent from the bottom to the top of the print uh, is a great way to start. Um, cutting your fan speed down to 50% actually works pretty well because if you think about it, you're running your fan at 50%, but you're running two atoms, so two of them, so you're running the same amount uh, of air circulation in theory. Um, obviously, there's a little bit of a difference, but it's not much. It's pretty negligible. Um, the other thing that uh, you are able to do if you want to get rid of that air is to two things. You can go into the Marlin. Uh, the the actual code of the firmware here and you can change the thermal runaway uh, you could just shut it off uh, that is a bad idea thermal runaway protection is there for a reason uh, but you can go in and extend the timer that goes off that lets you know you have thermal runaways basically you set that to around 90 seconds and it gives the hot end enough time to heat up to the point it's supposed to be at without thinking that it's not working, without malfunctioning and giving that thermal runaway error. Now, every time you get the thermal runaway error, you do have to reset the machine. And I was getting it a couple layers up in a print when my temperature changed. So um, consistency of hot end temperature or turning the fans down to 50% or going in and changing the firmware. And I will show you how to go in and change that line in the firmware um, in another video that we'll have coming up as well. But once you take care of that problem, you won't have any problems with this machine. It's, it's pretty solid. Uh, I've got a lot to say about it in my review. Um, so stay tuned for that. It's going to be good. And I'll show you all of the stuff that I've printed off of this thing and give you a little rundown of the exact specifications of speeds and things like that. So um, that's going to be it for this video, guys. It got a little longer than I intended it to, but I'm really enjoying the time I'm able to spend with the TiVo Tarantula so far. And like I said, this is the pro version. Uh, if you'd like to check it out for yourself, there's a link down below. Full disclosure, it is an affiliate link, so if you buy one through that link, it helps the channel out a little bit. I get a little bit of percentage there. Um, there are other places to get them. You can get them on Amazon. It's actually not as cheap as on Banggood. Uh, and, you know, Banggood, they ship their stuff usually from China. Sometimes you can get lucky. This happened to come to me from New Jersey, and it took about a week to get here. So. Uh, they have lots of stuff on stock here in the U.S. too. So um, that's going to be it, guys. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for our future videos. I got a lot of big changes coming up, including some visual and audio changes. Uh, but we'll have more on that tomorrow. So stay tuned in the afternoon. Uh, sometime before 2, we'll have a little announcement for you. And, yeah, that's basically it. As always, this channel is brought to you by these fine Patreon supporters. If you'd like to support the channel on Patreon, head over to www.patreon.com slash technivorous. All right, guys, that's going to be the end of this video. As always, thank you. I'll put a video up right here that you can check out for more of our stuff. And if you're still here and you haven't already, why don't you click right here and subscribe to the channel.